pat yourself on the back for that, but chill out. If you feel like an imposter and like you're not good enough to be a homeschool mom, I call BS. Not everyone's child is going to just sit there and open up a good literature book and read Huckleberry Finn curled up on the sofa and enjoy it. I look down and realize that I kind of look like Smee from Peter Pan. You know, Smee, the chubby little pirate guy. That is what I look like in this outfit. So we're just gonna try to unsee that. I'm gonna share with you guys some ways that you might be making homeschooling harder than it needs to be. It can be a common thing, especially amongst new homeschoolers, but even veterans too, okay, we're not immune from it, where you're like, this is a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. And in some ways it is, it's going to be harder than you think. There's lots of aspects that your brain doesn't even conjure up before you started homeschooling. If you really feel like this is actually like really hard and maybe impossible and I can't stay on top of this and I feel like all the balls are dropping. These are some things that I have recognized within myself and within my homeschool that tend to make me feel like it is hard when it doesn't necessarily need to be, or things that I observe in my friends, my other homeschooling mom friends. These are just some key things that you need to look at because they might be things that you're doing that are making homeschooling harder than it needs to be. Number one, and I feel like this is a culprit of many, many different problems and issues, and that is over scheduling. It is very easy to do, because we want our kids to be involved in a lot of things and we feel like we're you know just bolstering their little resumes and for some people it may even just be the pressure you feel to put your kids in a bunch of things because you need to prove that they're they're smart and they're well-rounded and they're homeschooled so you feel like you have something to prove over scheduling is just it is like numero uno in burning out and feeling like this is really hard because you can't stay on top of all of the things. You don't realize how much it takes out of your day when you're having to load everyone up in the car and drive somewhere. It is not just the driving there. It is the getting everyone ready. It is the loading them physically into the car, taking them into the place and out. Now, I'm not saying don't do anything outside of your home and don't schedule anything, but just make sure that you're being reasonable and not over scheduling. Um, take a look at your schedule and just see what you can remove. If you're feeling that crunch, it could very likely be because you have just over scheduled yourself, your kids, your family in general. I've talked about this one a lot over the years, but it's one that I feel really passionate about and I think it's just because it's such a part of my own story that I, and I see so many homeschooling moms do this and that is trying to replicate a public school environment at home. Guys, <laughs> homeschooling, home educating, isn't meant to be a copy and paste of public school, you're just doing it at your house. And listen, I get, I, I get that like the classroom and setting up your schoolroom and all of that is very fun. It also feels like using these particular types of curriculum and doing things a certain way and having the schedule in our morning time and our calendars and our posters on the wall and the weather and what day of the week is it and all of this kind of stuff, it feels like it's giving you some guardrails. And I know in the beginning of homeschool, that's I think a huge reason why a lot of people, myself included, dive right into trying to replicate a public school is because it feels safe. It feels like what we know, it's what, where we went to school perhaps. And so that's what we know. And that's what we assume is how we must move forward in educating our children. But what I will tell you is that the classroom was not set up for educating children. Okay, that sounds kind of harsh, but th that's the truth. There's a whole deep dive we could get into it that we're not gonna do right now about our education system, why it was set up, and why it was set up the way that it was. They didn't go, let's look at how kids learn best and let's develop a system for that. That's not what a school environment is. It is not a system that is set up because it's how kids learn best. With that knowledge, that means that you, if you're trying to replicate that in your home, it's going to be more stressful for you than it needs to be, likely not as enjoyable for your kids, and something that is just going to make your life harder, okay? It's not gonna make your life easier in the long run. Um, and, and I just, I say this because I, I've been there, I've done that, and I know that it takes time to build the confidence to walk away sometimes from 
those methods, but that's what I think is so fabulous about the, the internet and the world we live in today and the way that homeschooling moms can share with each other and you can learn from other people, you can learn from their mistakes, but you can also learn from how they do things. And you can really see that, wow, there is a whole wide world out there of ways to homeschool and options and things to do that are so much more flexible and don't make me feel as boxed in um, as trying to just like duplicate public school at home. And that kind of leads me to the next one, which is overly detailed planning um, of lessons and of, you know, just getting through the curriculum. I, planning is fun. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. In fact, I have a whole course coming up about homeschool planning. Okay. It's going to be amazing. I love it. But when we try to schedule and plan every last little detail, it makes things much harder because inevitably life will happen, things will happen, a child will not feel good one day, something will come up in your life that is just not part of the normal day, normal schedule, and it will throw things off kilter. And if you don't have a way, a plan to deal with that, if your whole homeschool system feels like it falls apart when you don't check every single box every single day, then the next day you're behind and now you gotta go back and like, I gotta go check those boxes and it will cause you so much stress and it will make it so much harder. So I've always said that I feel like flexibility is the biggest asset for a homeschooling mom. Being able to be flexible is something that, it's a gift that you are giving to yourself. Unwrap that thing every single day. The flexibility is so key. I'm very aware that in the beginning, when you are feeling very tightly connected and tightly bound by the uh, schedules and the expectations and are they doing enough and am I, I have to finish this curriculum and there's so many things that get into our heads as new homeschooling parents that can make it feel like um, it's not possible for us to be that flexible. We have to stay to the rigid schedule, but you find yourself not enjoying it. Your kids are not enjoying it. It feels hard for everybody and resentment comes and then burnout. It's a whole cycle that you don't want to get into, okay? So as flexible as you can be, um, remembering that you know the the rotation of the earth is not dependent upon you finishing every single math lesson in that book and being able to know when you need breaks and be flexible about those be flexible about your scheduling as much as you can and while you're scheduling all of those curriculums and things that you're planning on doing another way that I feel like people make homeschooling harder than it needs to be is with using really intense curriculums, okay? Listen, I know, like I said, we, we want the boundaries, we want the borders, we want the bumpers um, when we feel like we need to make sure that they're learning everything. And it, it just, first of all, it just goes to show how much you love your kids and care about them, okay? So if you feel like an imposter and like you're not good enough to be a homeschool mom, I call BS, okay? Just recognize how much you care about making sure that your kid is learning every little thing that they need to. It just speaks to uh, your ability and how much you love them and how much you care about them and their future and their success, okay? So pat yourself on the back for that, but chill out, okay? And you're gonna chill out because every little thing we have to like woosah ourselves, okay? Some of these curriculums are intense. They are a lot of do this and do that and da 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 Well, first of all, I'm not a curriculum maker, so I'm not even gonna try to guess at to, as to why they do that, but what I will say is that most authors of homeschooling curriculum and books and textbooks in general will say that they fully acknowledge, they consider the curriculum achieved, done, checked off, if a student finishes roughly 75% of it. I don't know if you remember back to your school days when you were, if you were in public school um, or private school where you were using textbooks, did you ever get to the last page of a textbook? I don't think I ever did in any school environment I was ever in, did we ever make it all the way to the last page of a textbook. So these things are built in with cushion and with room and you have the option, this is the beauty of it, you have the option to look at the lesson plan that's laid out and go, that is too much, we don't need to be doing that, nope, not gonna do that, all right, we're just gonna focus on these things. The more homeschooling is like a muscle, and the more that you do it, the better you get at recognizing uh, fluff and unnecessary things. 
Now, secondary to that, I do want to say that there, I think, this is just my humble opinion, and it goes against what you hear a lot in homeschooling, so you know how I like to be um, a contrarian sometimes, is that I think there is a place for a little bit of fluff and twaddle in your homeschool. I have found that the idea that we have like demonized all like printables, worksheets, and things is like busy work stuff. Well, you know what? When you've got eight kids and you're trying to homeschool some of them and you need some of them to be doing something, not getting in trouble, not flushing things down the toilet, busy work is sometimes a good helper for you, okay? It's not something that you should like stress out about and that your child should feel stressed out about, but having some worksheets, some handouts, some busy work, it buys you a chance to work one-on-one -on -one with other kids if needed. It buys you a chance to go take a pee or make another cup of coffee. There are reasons to, uh, not everyone's child is going to just sit there and open up a good literature book and read Huckleberry Finn curled up on the sofa and enjoy it. Not every kid is like that. And there, I think, is a little bit of guilt amongst homeschooling moms if they're like, my kid is in there reading something that is probably not, it's probably not part of Charlotte Mason's um, living books. It's okay, all right? It, it's okay to use printables and worksheets where you need to, um, but I'm trying to encourage you that don't make it harder than it needs to be. You don't have to do these insane curriculums with all of these added things that you're supposed to be doing in every single lesson, that can just be frankly too much. Feeling like your kid needs to do every single workbook or every single printable or every single handout page that is available is it's too much. I think there's a place for those. That place is usually to help you. These are obviously just my opinions, but again, they are based on 11 years of homeschooling experience and hundreds of other homeschooling moms that I know and communicate with and have been a part of you know, our community for so long. Uh, I'm not just pulling this stuff out of my rear end is all I'm saying. The next way that you might be making this uh, harder than it needs to be, it goes along with the others, but it's setting your expectations too high. I am all for high expectations for kids. I am full, a full believer, okay? Full believer that children will often rise to the occasion. I think sometimes we dumb down things too much for our kids when we could be sort of calling them up to more and to better. I'm totally a believer in that. But sometimes we can put too much on them and put too much on their plate and set our expectations too high and there's a lot of reasons I think that we do this I don't think it's born out of anything nefarious I don't think it's any ill intent obviously you're a mom you love your kids like you're not doing this because you don't like them you're doing it because I think you're worried selfishly about you you're worried about your child's school success how that reflects on you because Again, homeschooling is still one of those things that you can hardly go to the grocery store in the middle of the day or out somewhere in the middle of the day and not have somebody who is your homeschooled kid when they find out that they're homeschooled. Heck, it even happens at like church and other functions when your kid is out and someone finds out that they're homeschooled, they will like try to quiz them. So I know why we put up our um, hackles about this stuff and we feel like we set our expectations high. We've read the books, we've seen the kids that go to college and graduate medical school at 16 and are, you know, I don't know, robotic surgeon specialists by the time they're 22. And we think that just because our kids are homeschooled, that means they have to go to college early. They have to start taking college credits in high school. And we see what other people are doing and how advanced their homeschooled kids seem to be. It's the beauty of homeschool is that if you have a child that is um, of exceptional intellect or moves much faster through things, then homeschooling is great because it puts up no roadblocks for them. It lets them just keep skiing down the hill until they crash but or, or get to the bottom. Obviously, you don't want them to crash. But until they get safely to the bottom at their own speed, okay? That's the beauty of it. But that doesn't mean that your kid has to be flying down the hill at the same speed. They can be, I know nothing about skiing, so I'm just, these analogies are just terrible. But what's it called, like the bunny hill or whatever? The one that's the easiest one. I know there's like a black diamond run, and I know that from that Queen Latifah movie, but then there's like the bunny hill, I think, or whatever. I've never been skiing. So the easy one, if your kid is going down that one like sideways with their skis, like mm -mm 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 -mm, you think that that means they're never gonna get to the bottom and they're gonna, you know, it's, oh, it's gonna be terrible. 
the whole point of homeschooling is pacing for your child at their pace. So when we set our expectations like way up here, we put all of this stress and so much of it is self-imposed because again, we have to ask ourselves, well, what is this about? Is this about my child or is this about me and how I think it reflects on me if my kid isn't ahead or even if they're behind, which is a fallacy in and of itself. Even if your child is not at grade level in certain subjects, we can convince ourselves that that is more about us than them almost, right? It feels like a reflection of us and what kind of teacher we are, uh, what kind of homeschooling mom we are, and we're obviously not doing a good enough job. It's all nonsense, okay? The point of homeschooling is about allowing your child to learn at their pace, allowing them to learn in a way that um, is successful and beneficial for them. We have different learning styles. Every kid, right? They have different learning styles. You have a different teaching style. You have an educational philosophy. You gotta kind of marry all these things together and do the best you can to take those expectations down a few notches, both of your children and of yourself. And um, because again, I would just urge you when you're feeling that like feeling of let down, it's unmet expectations and what is that about? Is it about you or is it about them? Um, if it's about them, if it's truly about them and what's best for them, then it's time to like make some changes and stuff in what you're asking of them and how you're doing curriculum and all of that. But if it's about you and your what you think that says about you, you've gotta like shake that off and let that go um, because it's not gonna help you. It's not gonna help you and it's not gonna help your child and it's just going to make things much harder than they need to be. And by the way, I know it's easier said than done, okay? But I have to give you the information. I can't implement it for you, but I feel that I need to at least tell you what I've learned um, the hard way, by the way, what I've learned the hard way. Now, the kind of flip side of that is, and I see this a lot, where the homeschooling mom is working way harder than the kids, okay? Homeschooling your kids shouldn't mean that you are busting your tail all the time and your kids are just like, well, one of the beauties of homeschooling is to help your children become autonomous as early as they reasonably can because you want them to be self-sufficient adults. You want them to be able to figure out how to figure stuff out, um, how to learn things, how to discover things, how to research things but also how to manage themselves and their time. So the whole point is that we're training our kids to be able to be self-sufficient and autonomous in their day. So if you are the one that is like working hard all the time and your kids are just kind of like showing up and like turning in their little worksheet and then leaving, you gotta make some changes. You are making this way harder. Your kids need to pull their weight in terms of homeschooling. And this goes back to kids being able to rise to the occasion. Um, it's not up to you, you shouldn't be running yourself ragged um, for homeschooling, making sure you're doing all of this and the crafts and the printables and blah, 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 and then they just leave the mess on the table and go away. And you're like, all right, I just spent two hours setting all that up. They came in here like tornadoes, destroyed it in 20 minutes and then left. It's just important to be sure that you're not overextending yourself in order to create this homeschool that you think you need to create based on what you've seen on social media and stuff. Everything has to be like, we have to be watercolor painting everything and coloring things. We've gotta be gluing leaves into the notebook and all of the things that you think you need to be doing and you're overworking yourself um, and there's really, the ROI on this is terrible, okay? I mean, I'm not an expert, but I'm, I can tell you the ROI is terrible. You're likely just spinning your wheels on this stuff because you think that you need to based on what you've seen um, online sometimes. I get it, I love some of the aesthetics of homeschooling just as much as the next person. And sometimes it helps inspire me and encourage me and bring beauty and joy into my homeschool day to include those kind of things. But um, I will not do them if my children are not enjoying them, participating in them, and, uh, and being just as much a part of it as me, okay? I just, I don't wanna be working 10 times harder than they are. All right, y'all. So those are six ways that I think that a lot of moms can inadvertently make homeschooling harder than it needs to be. Um, I've been there. Like I said, this is always coming from a perspective of like, these are the things I've learned the hard way. And I wanna share that with you so that hopefully you don't have to learn it the hard way. You can recognize it at the start and be like, ah, I, I feel myself doing that thing and I'm not gonna do it.